All right, y'all, I'm like Jesus. I may not come when you want me, but I'm always on time. Let me start out by saying, I did not even know this last episode of Married in Medicine was going to be the season finale. And I am actually very proud of myself because at the start of the year, I made a vow to y'all that I was going to be consistent and do all the shows and do every episode. And believe it or not, I made it through the entire season with the exception of last week. And y'all were blowing up my social media. Like, Daniva, it's such a good episode. You got to do last week's episode. And I'm actually mad that I did it because this season finale was weak as hell. Like, I, it just... I, and maybe it's a, it's going to be a springboard for the reunion that looks like it's about to be pretty spicy. So let me touch on last week really quickly. I did rewatch the episode, but I will say this. I think there was a grave miscommunication between Lisa Nicole and Dr. Heavenly. <clears throat> I think... <clears throat> I think Lisa had one intention... Heavily had one understanding of what was going on. And I kind of think somewhere along the way, Lisa Nicole allowed Heavenly to continue believing something that wasn't 100% true. I don't think Lisa Nicole lied. I don't think her intent was to deceive. But I don't think she corrected Heavenly with what her true intentions were or what her understanding of what the relationship was going to be after she heard Heavenly going down that lane. I'm for one with Heavenly. If we split the cost in half, to me, half denotes partnership off rip. Now, Lisa, when they got to argue, was saying, well, I'm giving you a platform and you speaking at my event. Well, and if I'm only being a part of your event, then I should only be paying a part of the fee, like a, a, a vendor fee or a fee for my table or a fee for my booth. But if I'm paying half, beyond that, I don't give two dams what other verbiage is used. The money trumps everything. Half denotes we are 50-50 partners in this thing. And I think that's where the breakdown in communication came from. Um, because Lisa Nicole, for the life of me, I don't know why anybody would agree to just be a guest. If, if, if I'm just being a guest speaker at your event, then why am I here helping you plan? That means my work is independent. I can do my work on my own. I can go home and rehearse my own little piece of segment. Then you call my name. I do my segment and go on about my business. So, you know, Lisa, this kind of, at the end of the day, I don't think you lie, but I do think you are responsible for not clearing up the miscommunication that led to this big old blowout. Um... Lisa, I'm going to tell you another thing, too. I think you're playing on the wrong team. I think you don't fuck you like... You wanted a friend so bad. You wanted a friend so bad that you was kicking it with whoever would kick it with you peaceably. But you got to understand, Mariah had an agenda. You know what I'm saying? Mariah had been demoted. She's a, a, a friend of the show. Um, nobody else was interested in filming with her. You needed a friend. She needed the film. So it was two people with needs that met in the middle. But in doing that, Lisa, you got all Mariah's bad juju with the girls conferred upon you. If they don't fuck with her, and then you ride in the car with her, they ain't gonna fuck with you either. And I think you don't fuck around and allow Mariah to kind of get you exiled. And it's just, it's not a good situation at all. I ain't gonna say no more about it because... According to the internet and Mariah per her Facebook video, from what I heard, um, I'm biased and I'm all on Quad's side and Quad got me in, in her pocket. Do I not get Quad ass together too? I just call things how I see it and I remember a chain of events that took place a few years ago. Um, and you know, and I got a question too, Mariah, since we owned it since we lead up to the reunion. When did you discover that Quad used you for a set of friends and then um, after she used you and couldn't use you no more, she abandoned you and turned the girls against you? Like, when did you realize that? Because you only started saying that this season. For the last two years, that's not the story you was on. You was telling another story. So I'm kind of confused. I like, is this a new epiphany or... 
I don't know. It's just a sad situation all the way around. And, you know, I, I don't know if I touched on this in another video, but I've been thinking it for a very long time. Mariah, I'm going to follow your story really quickly. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say that, yes, Quad did nothing but use you. All she did was use you. Used you for a circle of friends. But beyond that, I think you give her too much credit. So she used you for the friends. And she had the power to turn them against you. Like, I don't understand how that works. Especially when you were the queen bee of the group. Okay, fine. She used you to get in. But how is it possible, little old quad, hood rat quad, get on quad that need help being in the medical circle. Those all the ways you tried to paint her in season one. I don't understand how a little ghetto girl that worked at Memphis and lived out her car was able to infiltrate your group of friends and then turn the whole group against you. That just something they I hope that y'all get into that in the reunion. Um, and Mariah, I would love to have you on the podcast. I don't know if you're willing to do it, but I would love to have you on the podcast. And speaking of guests, y'all, we are interviewing Dr. Heavenly next Friday. And I'm going to see if I can get a couple other people. We reached out to Lisa Nicole. She hasn't responded back yet. Um, see if we get some of the other girls on the line after the reunion. But let's get into this final episode of Married to Madison. What did it give? I guess it didn't give nothing, so I just keep talking about what I want to talk about. Believe it or not, y'all, Toya, somebody who started out as one of the characters I could take a leave in the beginning, I really am feeling Toya and Eugene at the end of the season. You know, I think, like, uh, you know, one thing they always said about Toya, she can't be tacky as hell, and she ain't been this tacky this season. And she ain't been that dumb this season, which lead me to believe it was all an act in the first place. But Toya is real. And I enjoy her because she's real and she is practical. She's real and she's practical. Um, Heavenly, what have we learned? Heavenly, you ain't as saved as you say you is. And yeah, Heavenly, you from Miami. You went to New Orleans. I went to Kara City. So we grew up in the same area, same neighborhood. I know you, especially when that bitch slipped out. From Miami, we will call you a bitch in a heartbeat. Get us hot. Uh, but you ain't the same as you said you is, Heavenly. And I get it. Y'all are medical professionals. And so you have to act a certain way. You try to conduct yourself a certain way. But it's funny because when a bitch pushed you to the limit, all that um, veil and shit you got going on will fucking disappear. That's like exactly what happened. Now, Heavenly, I thought that at the very end of the day, when you spoke with Jewel, you were going to come back and be friendly to Nicole and be nice to her and say you forgive her. Um, while I can respect your honesty, Heavenly, I still think it was rooted in something a little disingenuous and a little evil. I don't know why I feel like the ladies, y'all get a kick out of picking on Lisa Nicole. Like, either Lisa need to slap the shit out of one of y'all so y'all could back the fuck up off of her. Or Lisa needs to learn to damn speak up for her damn self. Like, it really is like some animal kingdom shit when you have a pack of dogs. And it's like, Lisa, you the weakest dog in the pack. And then you make bad decisions. And I don't think Lisa lies. I think she just colors the truth. And she colors it whatever color she wants to see. Sometimes the truth is ugly and Lisa will color it pretty. So it makes you look delusional and weak and stupid. And it don't help that your husband ain't making things better. You need to pull a page out of Cynthia and Peter book and next season, your husband don't need to be nowhere near this damn show because it's not working for you. I don't think it's healthy for your marriage and you get me, you being made a fool out of on this show and you being made a fool out in these streets. You being made a fool out on the social media. It's just not a good look for you. Honestly, it truthfully needs to be called Real talking, I ain't trying to take no money out of nobody's pocket, but Lisa Nicole, your ass about need to be demoted to a friend of the show, and they need to bring somebody on here who can handle the heat. Like, Janice, Janice Broida, you see, she had a problem out of Heavenly one damn time. Janice ain't had no more damn problems, okay? She had no got Grandma Hilda together. Jackie and her lookbook. Though I said the season finale was weak, it came to a happy close. With the lookbook, the pictures look really good. 
Um, I am glad that y'all were able to do something positive, and I am glad y'all were able to come together. Y'all saw Maya slide from cutting in the ATL, try to slide on them. Child, you know your friendship circle bad when you got to bring people from other networks with contracts that say they can't appear on other reality TV shows to the party with you. Girl, the problem people was trying their hardest to cut my ass out the damn shots or whatever. <laughs> we TV, <laughs> we TV ain't having that. I'm trying to think what else was going on. Toya, Lisa, Lisa still ain't pregnant, y'all. I saw her a couple weeks ago. She ain't pregnant. Quad. Now, you know good and goddamn well the reason Monica went home is because y'all got that first couple DVDs back from the first couple episodes. And that lady saw how you was embarrassing her up and down the damn TV. And that's why she wasn't happy. That's right, Monica. You better get the hell out of Dodge. Quad are they embarrassing you for a storyline. She don't want to have no baby, but she want to parade yours up and down the street and talk down on you and her brother like y'all ain't got no business about yourself. That's damn right, Monica. Carry your ass back home. Tell her, shit, I could have stayed home to be embarrassed. Hell. Um, I'm trying to think what else went on. Lisa in that conference that nobody came to. Mariah. Um, I want this Mariah and Kawhi situation to come to a resolution. Um, either a resolution or a complete dissolution. Um, it's awkward. It's kind of like, you know, I guess Mariah figured, okay, I've been demoted. I'm not filming, so... I'm just going to be the shadiest in the interviews. Yeah, she's serving in them interviews. Mariah is just throwing that shade. But then it just, because you're not in the inner circle, it just makes you look bitter. Like, it just makes you look bitter. And you commenting on shit that really ain't got nothing to do with you because you ain't filming it. And I hate the fact Mariah did have a lot of stuff going on this season. And for whatever reason, the production company chose not to cover her. And I think that's because... The relationship is a little tainted from some things that happened years prior. Mariah did have a miscarriage of twins. Um, her sister um, had some health issues after she had her baby. Mariah had to bring the baby home and see about it. She lost her father. Mariah did have some real world stuff going on, but for whatever reason, they chose not to cover it. Only she and they know why. I'm trying to think what else. Um, I don't know. I mean... Uh, we have to wait to the reunion and see what's going on, y'all. That's that's really all I got for this. It didn't give me a whole lot. And since I missed my window of opportunity uh, last week with the other one, I can't go up. So, let me get out of here. But I'll see y'all soon. Bye.